Hey, welcome back. It's been a while since I've done a cooking video and I know y'all have been waiting and waiting and waiting so patiently. I really appreciate your patience. I am through my recovery period and everything has been going great. So I wanted to share a video that was kind of relevant to everybody I know. So today we're going to do a couple of different projects. One, we're going to make a bone beef broth, which in a later video, we will turn that beef bone broth into a really, really gastroparesis gut friendly soup that you can freeze or freeze dry and, and reconstitute later and eat as you're ready and in, you know, whatever strength you're, you need. The other thing we're going to do is I bought a half loin pork roast. Very cool. Excited about that. And we're going to cut it up into a couple of different types of meats. And we are going to use one of those to make Jaeger schnitzels. So I love German dishes. I think they're wonderful. And I love Jaeger schnitzels. It's great. It's like a cube steak, but fried, but made out of pork. It's like everything good about it. All the gravy and everything is just wonderful. And all the flavors are great. So I think you're going to enjoy this video. I hope it's informative to y'all. And let's get started. Okay, first things first. To make the bone beef broth, you need to know kind of basically what you're looking for to buy. So obviously, if you're making a bone broth, you're going to be using lots of bones. But you don't want it to be purely bone. You do want some good, solid chunks of meat and lots of fat and stuff on it as well. Good marbling, just like if it was like normal meat. And in this way, you've got good broth that actually works in along with the marrow and along with all of the good stuff that's collagens and everything that's actually in those bones. So um, I have today picked out some some different varieties of meats and I'm going to use all of them. You don't have to necessarily use all of them or you can use stuff that's similar or maybe just some of these. It's really kind of your choice. So let's look at what we've got. Stuff's so still frozen, but the first thing I've got here are these beef chuck short ribs, bone in, obviously. And this is where the majority of our beef is coming from. Um, it doesn't matter if they thaw out all of the way because you're going to boil them. So they're going to thaw out no matter what. The second thing I have is just beef bones. like, And you can see there's still some chunks of meat on here, which is great. That's kind of what you want to look for, this beautiful marbling and all of this is just fabulous. And then this here, you can get at Kroger's. These are just beef marrow bones. And what I like best about these is they've actually got, I don't know if you can see it real good, the marrow. See that? That little ring right there? And that marrow has collagen. It has protein. It has just all, all the good stuff that you want. So I've got two of those. So we're going to do... Let's see, this one says that it is 1.47 pounds, so about a pound and a half, a little less than that here, about a, again, about a pound and a half, so that's three pounds almost of beef marrow bones, and then H-E-B, I found these beef bones at, and you can see the prices and stuff, and don't worry about the date, y'all, it's been frozen, so it's fine. And this is exactly one pound. So now we're looking at four pounds right there. And then over here, these beef chuck short ribs bone in. And you can see, again, don't worry about the date. This is four, a little over four pounds. We'll, we'll say four pounds. So we've got four, five, six, seven, eight, basically eight pounds of bones. And we're going to make a large pot of beef bone broth using all of that. Now, if you're curious, price-wise, it was about $5 each for these, about two and a half for those. This was the most expensive part, and this is where the majority of our broth is gonna come from, and that was 23.2. But for four pounds, not bad. So you can see the price per pound was a little high. I think I can do better, but I was in a hurry when I bought these because I wanted to get really good quality ingredients to show y'all with. So. All of that is going to go in that pot and be boiled. Okay, pot, big pot. I don't know how big this is. It's really big, big pot. So we're going to put that on the burner there. We're going to take our bones and we're just basically going to dump everything in the pot. 
That's a big old bone. Beautiful, I love all the meat on that. That's great. Now that we've got everything in here, the next step is to actually cover it with water. So let me kind of show you what this looks like in the pot and then we'll get this filled up with water. All right, there it is. So everything's just thrown in there, no particular order. It's all gonna blend. Now I do wanna show you with one of these real quick. Let me see, here it is. Yeah, you can see it real good on this one. See that Morrow in the center? So what we're gonna be looking for is all this meat is just gonna cook down, the fat and all that is gonna dissolve off, but it starts off really kind of squishy hard. That is gonna dissolve and basically just disappear. Basically all that is is fat and collagen. That's where the good stuff is. So, boom. All of that in the pot. Let's fill this. We're gonna cover it just above the level here with some water, a little bit of salt, and get it going. We want a good amount of water in there. We just do. It's got to boil a long time, guys. That's one reason we're doing the Jaeger schnitzels today as well. Is because this is going to boil a long time. So we're pretty much filling this pot up. And it's a big old pot. It's twice as tall as my sink. I got a big sink. We could add more water as we go if we need to. That was pretty good. I'll show you that. That's good. I'll show you how deep that is. Yeah, there's the top one right there. It's about that deep. Let's get it on the stove and get some salt in it and get it going and get the lid on it and get it boiling. And then we can start cutting up our pork loin. can't pick the pot up. It's definitely more than my 10 pounds. There we go. All right, we've got the pot on the stove. This is good old all natural salt. It's gonna cook down some. I don't want it super salty, but this does help get a little bit more sterilized, helps it cure a little better, and brings out the beef flavor. You, you didn't see that, I hope. Lid on. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on high. Okay, so. Next step, get this boiling. And while we're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and cut up that pork loin and get it ready to make Jaeger schnitzels. Yay! Jaeger! Okay, so we finally hit a good boiling temperature. And I wanna show you what that looks like before we actually turn the temperature down. We started off at high. And now that we've got this broth boiling really good, we do wanna stir it every now and again, but we want it to be a low boil. So we're gonna turn it from high. So we start off here. Water everywhere, of course. So we start off here. And the lid just stays on firm. And we're just going to turn that down to low, medium. It's going to, like I said, people, this is going to boil. I'm not even exaggerating when I say a minimum. Yeah, two and a half is good. A minimum of six hours. So, yeah. We get a ways to go. No, the video won't be that long. We'll time lapse it for you. But in the meantime, Jaeger schnitzels. Let's start by getting our meat cut up. Okay, so now we're at the good part. So what the first thing we want to do here is we want to trim some of this fat off. And you can see how it just kind of separates here on the edge. So you just pull that up a little bit all the way across and you can take your knife 
can kind of help. Now you don't want to cut it towards yourself. So take the knife. And just trim all that off. So we're going to get this trimmed off and then I'll start showing you how to slice it. Hey, I just realized I've got this halfway done, so you see how to do it with a normal knife, but let me show you my new Ulu knife. Hang on, I'll be right back. This is called an Ulu knife. This is actually made for this kind of stuff, so it's great. You just take this here. Look how much simpler that is. Boom, done. And I'm not losing that much meat at all that way. That's beautiful. That's great. So we left a little bit of the fat on there. We want a little bit for the juices and stuff, but not all of it. I've got quite a bit more fat right there I'm going to take off. Hang on. That looks like dog meat. Don't like that later. Yeah, that looks good. Awesome. Dog food for later. I'll just set that aside. You know what? Let's just go ahead and go for it with this. I'm really digging my new blade. Okay. All right, so the first cut I'm going to make is pork chops, and I'm liking this end better. So I need three good-sized pork chops. I want them to be nice and thick. Right about there looks great. One. I love how nice and even these nice cuts. Beautiful pork chop. beautiful pork chops. Now the next cut I want to make is for Jaeger stencils and these are like same as pork chops but thinner so save the rest of this here I could make strips you know other strips or chunks even or anything like that but I think I'm gonna leave it whole so that I have the option later of using it as either a roast or I could chunk it out later if I want to so let's get this packed up except for our Jaeger schnitzels which we're gonna use and our dog meat which we're gonna cut up a little bit smaller and cook for the animals so they get a special treat and we'll come back then. <sighs> okay, now that's packed up and we're ready to move on to the next step. So I want y'all to be able to see this. So I'm going to bring the camera in closer so you can really, really get a look at what I'm doing here because this is important. All right, so this is our little 
piece of pork and you can see this is really thin maybe an eighth of an inch thick at the most which is about as thick as you want them to be so we're going to get really abusive with this we're going to use a small hammer not the big one the small small grid i guess i don't know what you call that anyway and you start by beating the center here and spreading it out towards the outsides okay Once you get it to where it's actually working towards the edges, the idea is to work it out towards the edges. See how that's getting thinner and fed spread further out. And I found it down and back, down and back, down and back. I was doing it the other way earlier to try to show y'all, but it's it's down and back. So. Let me show you what this other side looks like now. See? That's perfect. Now we're going to flip it over. As you see, we've got these beautiful ripples on this side. And that's what we want this side, other side to look like. So they spread out a lot. See, so they start off this size. And just, you can see, and end up that size. All right, let's do these other two. So the thin sides obviously don't need as much. I got this one a little bit thin when I cut it. I'm still new with the Yulu knife, so it's not expected. That's good. I'm happy with that. Yeah, this one's a lot thicker, so it's going to be the biggest one. Whoops. My sister, bless her heart, she bought me this uh, new little, it's a Vivitar uh, holder thing. I haven't figured it out yet, y'all. So when I do, we won't have this problem. For now, let's finish these. Good night. We're good. We're good. We're good. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Yay. Three. So they start off thin. They get even thinner. <laughs> I love them. Now we got to get our batter together. Hang on. So our batter is actually a pretty simple combination of some egg dip and then flour with some seasoning. So let me show you all that. So here's our eggs. We're going to bathe them in that. Of course, I'm going to whisk that together first, but four eggs for the three I had is more than enough. And about this much flour. It's not that deep. So let's get the seasonings in and I'll try to show this to you so you can actually see. So we'll start with the paprika and I use paprika mainly for coloring and it's got just that enough spice. Yeah, that's about right. All right, we'll do pepper or let's do garlic powder first. about 50 50 there now's our pepper it's not want to come out of there there we go and salt all right there we 
we go. Okay, so we're gonna whisk all that together, get it mixed together good. Holding the phone with my left hand, so I'm having to rely on my right hand to start with. There we go. And then our eggs, same basic thing. <sighs> my arm is out. I think that's good enough. All right, eggs and flour. Super simple. So, we're gonna just take our meat and dip it in the eggs and then into the flour. And once it's coated real good, it'll go in the oil. We're running so late. Legs don't fail me now. Now, these are not thick, so they don't need a really thick layer of grease at all or oil. I'm just using canola oil. Okay. Yay. I'm gonna get these battered up. All right, so we take our Jaegers, uh, or schnitzels, schnitzels, these are just schnitzels. The sauce, the sauce is the Jaeger part. So we take our schnitzels, we dip them in the egg, and get them really good and coated there. And then once they're coated in the egg, like I said, they just go in the flour. Now you want it to kind of soak in really good. So we're gonna take a plate and we're gonna put them on the plate. If I can find a spot for the plate. And just set them aside after we're done getting them battered and let them sit for a few minutes while our grease actually heats up. So, just put that. It's great so far. Coat it really good on both sides. Yeah, that looks fabulous right there. Just like that. Maybe. I developed a hole. Sorry about that. Just like that. There we go. Perfect. That just sets on the plate until we're ready to fry. All right, I'm gonna get these other two done and then we'll come back to see the actual frying process. I tried to burn the house down. Yeah, I uh, started the oil and um, then chopped my potatoes and got my broccoli together and got all my side dishes together. So, cause sizzles don't take very long to cook. Yeah, I totally spaced and forgot that the oil was there. I've told you I have functional memory loss and this is like, this can be a problem sometimes. Luckily, my son noticed that it looked like a smoke bomb had gone off in our kitchen. I've almost got it cleared out. It's still pretty cloudy in here, so yeah, it was fun. Um, a note on the grease. I called my parents. I wanted to touch base with my mom, and I was like, I am, yeah. And she reminded me, she was like, you're using canola oil? Why aren't you using grease? You should be using baking grease, not canola oil. It's not a true sizzle. It's not a true sizzle. Okay, so I don't happen to have lard or any baking grease right now. I do usually keep baking grease. I just don't have any right now, so that's why I'm using canola oil. But if you want to do it more traditional, and it does actually add more flavor, I just really just wanted to show you all the method. Um, yeah, yeah, you want to use baking grease or, or lard, like whatever float your boat and don't space and turn your grease on and walk away and do a bunch of other stuff <coughs> All right it really is a little smoky I'm being dramatic but yeah I'm gonna step out until it has a chance to air out well okay so we're back in the kitchen our grease is piping hot and we are ready to start frying up our schnitzel yay grease I threw just a splash of water in there. It is like popping hot still. So now we take our schnitzel, see how that batter has just kind of melted onto there. That's perfect. So just peel that off and into our grease or lard or whatever you're using. There it goes. Off and over and in. Now, a fork. Make 
make room for our last schnitzel. Beautiful. Three schnitzels in the pan. So we're going to let those brown and then flip them over. And I'll let you see that when we get there. All right, pray for me. I'm going to try to flip this and hold the camera. Oh, it's beautiful. That is exactly what we want to see. Just like that. These do not take long to fry up at all. All right, I think yes. that looks perfect. Those are done. Just like that. Beautiful. Very special. Very good. And I would agree that these would be better in bacon fat to get. But, oh my gosh, these already smell so perfect. They're wonderful. Three perfect Jaeger schnitzels. I'm sorry, I keep saying schnitzels. Jaeger's is actually the sauce. These are just the schnitzels. So I'm not even going to lie, Jaeger sauce is so super simple. Golden mushroom, boom, Campbell's golden mushroom. A can of this, a little bit of Worcestershire, whisk it together, put it over the top of everything, just like a gravy. That's all it is. It's just golden mushroom gravy. Time to eat. We've got it put together. Let's check out the plate. Oh, Jaeger schnitzel. Looks yummy. Let's see how it tastes. It is like super moist and easy to cut. I love that. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bacon grease or not, that's good. All right, y'all. It was a long night, but we got through it, and we have beef broth. It is done and ready to pull from the pot. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start by stirring it and checking it. So let me show you that. Oh. So this is what it's gonna look like when it's done. And remember I was telling you about those ringlets? There it is. Now all that's in there is some of the beef that's left and you can see some of the tidbits. We're gonna pull that aside for the dogs. In the meantime, the first step is to go ahead and pull all of this out of this pot. Except for the broth, of course. We, we just want to get the bones out. So, I have a trusty little strainer spoon here. And we just pull it out. Juice right off. Ooh, steam. Steamed up my camera. There we go. I'm going to set that aside for use later. You can see all that meat we're going to pull for the dogs. Alright, I'm going to get all this pulled out. And we'll come back and see the next step. Okay. And you can see I had needed a bigger bowl, so I ended up transferring to a bigger bowl. But you can see this is what all we pulled out. And all of this beef here is just great for the dogs. And they can have these short rib bones here too, even though they, you can see they're real porous. They don't have anything, but it'd be good to gnaw on. Now these bones, like that one, I'm not going to give to the dog. And I'm not going to give them the, the rings that I was telling y'all about either. So Now I went ahead and separated out the beef from the bones so that you could kind of see. This is how much bones you have compared to beef. So you've actually got about 50-50 by the time you're done. Now I'm going to take all this beef and I am going to turn that into dog food later. I think they'll really enjoy that. And we're going to do that by just taking some rice and some carrots and the beef and maybe some green beans and mixing it all together and then bagging it up into individual portions and freezing it. 
Now that's a lot of work already, but we're almost through it. So the next step is actually going to be to prepare our jars. I'm not actually storing these on the shelf. Here in a couple of days, I'm going to turn this into that gut gastric friendly soup. So I'm just going to store it in the refrigerator, which you can do perfectly safe as long as you're not storing it for too long. And in order to get those in the jars, I need my jars to be sterile. So let me show you that. So for my newbies, this is how you sterilize your jars to store your food in. So I've got my big sterilization pot. Please forgive my sink full of clean dishes there and the lard I finally got together. But right here, inside here, you'll notice I've got my little basket uh, tray thing on the bottom with all the holes and a minimum of five jars. Now this has been sitting waiting on me overnight. That's what the bubbles are about. But you see, you just put your jars in there, cover them with water, put all your lids and stuff. Be sure to have that tray in the bottom. No salt necessary. And on high. We'll get those boiling, and once they hit a boiling temperature, we pull them out, drain them off, set them aside to cool on a cooling rack, and before they cool all the way, we put our hot broth in, which I'm going to keep warm until they're ready. While we're waiting on our jars to sterilize, I'm keeping our broth good and hot and boiling, but you're going to need one other supply in addition to your jars, and that is cheesecloth. You can also use coffee filters if you can't find or don't have cheesecloth. I just get this at my local HEB. It comes in a nice long roll and you can cut it up. Uh, I found it on the end cap by the cheese counter if anybody else is looking for it. Um, yeah, so we've got our cheesecloth, we've got our jars. Our jars are sterilizing. We've got a couple extra jars just in case and our broth is staying hot. We'll come back when it's time to actually get the broth in the jar. I pre-measure my cheesecloths right here. I like to kind of double them up so I've got two layers, but basically they just need to be a little bit wider than your jars so that as you're pouring the stuff in with a ladle, you can hold the outside here and then just pour it through and it actually just kind of strains out any particles that you missed. And we'll be doing four of our jars with cheesecloth. This is just one I've got waiting. And then we'll do one of them with the coffee filters. Ooh, I think we have boilage, let's check. Yes, that's exactly what we wanna see. Now we wanna let that go for about 12 minutes. And when that's done, we'll pull them out and put our broth in. All right, they're done. Let's see if we can get these out. If you don't own one of these little jar lifter things, you really should get one. They're invaluable, like truly invaluable. All right, we get the rest of these out and our lids and stuff. And we'll look at how to jar them up. Okay, so we've got our jars already, and I want to show you how I've got those set up so that you can see that, and then we're going to start ladling our broth into our jars. So here it goes. So I put an elastic band around each of our cheesecloths and our, our filter here. This is just a coffee filter. I told y'all I'd show you both methods so that y'all could see that it's not really anything special. It's just a rubber band to hold it in place so that while you're ladling it in, which we're about to do, the cheesecloth doesn't fall into the jars. So, here's our broth, and this is exactly what we want to see. Just get a good ladle full. There we go. And you can see the cheesecloth just catches all the little particulates. Let that one strain down a little bit and come back. Now, if you get to where you start having trouble and it's getting like that, where it's, it's got quite a bit in it, you can fix that problem by just taking a spoon, a little spoon, and just kind of spreading it a little bit like that. You can see that just allows the rest of the liquids to 
go down. We can even scoop that out of there. Because all that's going to do is block us. And that's just good old beef. So we'll just put that in with the dog tool down. That out the way. Doesn't look that appealing, but the dogs love it. So more power to them. We get our ladle back. And back at it we go. And you see, it'll just start filtering out again. So you can see the cheesecloth just does a really good job of catching that. that it doesn't get into your broth because you don't really want that in the broth itself. And this jar is actually almost full. You can see the rubber of it right there. So I got maybe one more ladle to go in that one. All right. This one I think is actually good enough. So let's take that off. I'll show you what it looks like. And I'm not gonna make torture y'all by making you sit through all of these. Alright, all of that. And that's pretty much just fat anyway. And there it goes. Okay. That's really good enough. You see it's already starting to separate. We're going to put the lid on this and put it in the fridge. And then what will happen is this part up here will harden. And down here is our actual broth. So that looks great. That's going to make such a good soup. So let me show you basically how well the paper filter works. So you can decide which way you want to do this. So same thing. Take a little... I didn't hold near as much water and it's filtering a lot slower. See that? So I'm really not as happy with the paper. Wah, wah, wah. I think the cheesecloth works better. Because that is just like, I mean, it's like coffee, you know. So I'm not happy with the coffee filter technique. I don't think it works near as good. Yep, nope. I'm going to take the paper off and use a cheesecloth instead. I don't like that. My mom and dad suggested the paper. I'd never tried the paper before. That's really slow. That would take a year. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. But cheesecloth works really, really well. Okay. So, those are the two different methods to filter. Uh, like I said, I like the cheesecloth better. I think it just works better. And I uh, hope that helps. So, I'm going to get the lids on these and get them in the fridge. And that's it for the day, y'all. I'll show you the finished product. There it is. Five beautiful jars. I don't know if you can see all of them or not, but there they are looking spectacular so what's going to happen you can see this one's already starting to do it so is this one right in there is all of this top part is just going to coagulate and it's going to turn into kind of a white like lard type substance and we'll just scrape that off and all of this from this line down is bone broth so that looks spectacular <laughs> I'm so excited. I don't know if I'm more excited that it's over with or to drink it once it's done, but here in a couple days, we are going to turn this wonderful broth into a delicious soup that is gut friendly and gastroparesis friendly. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get that post right away. Also, be sure to like this video. It really helps drum kind of more traffic to my channel. It helps me grow a lot, and I'd really appreciate it. 
I am going to show you one more clip once these have coagulated. That's going to take me a couple hours. It'll only be a second or two for you. But uh, I'll see you then. Let's check them out. Oh, that's perfect. That is exactly what we want to see. Look how good those turned out. Oh. Okay, and that is how you make beef bone broth. And of course, don't forget about the Jaeger schnitzels. I've got my dog food going here. I've got some veggies cooked up and the meat is shredded and ready. And now we're getting the rice done. <sighs> I'm not gonna do a video on that today, but uh, maybe next time. In the meantime, thanks as always for watching y'all.